And ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome to Martin Nguyen. The situation up against Gary Tonin at 1165, Superlek versus Takeru in Tokyo. One championship returns to arguably the home of mixed martial arts. It's such a uh, bucket list thing, right, for fighters to compete in Japan. I know it means a lot to you, but does it give you that extra motivation to get up and train hard every day when you know you've got not only a massive fight for this division, but you're, you're fighting in Japan? Yeah, the fight, I mean, the fight itself is um, is a barn burner, you know, but, um, you know, to top it off, the icing on the cake is we get to do it in Japan. As you said, the home of mixed martial arts, I mean, I feel that the the Japanese is like, uh, they're, they're the most um, knowledgeable when it comes to sports like this. So, um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Definitely pretty cool. How motivated are you right now? Because this puts you right in the position that you want to be in, in terms of the title. If you beat Gary Tonin, especially if you make a statement, how difficult it is, is it to not feel the pressure of that and just enjoy <laughs> that fact? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's all or nothing, right? Right now, where it is, uh, where I'm at in my career, it's all or nothing. And um, this fight is definitely the, the, the right fight to make for the number one contendership. Um, we both had our shots at the the titles or own the titles, and we want to get back up up there and you know try to regain that title or get that title. So this fight with me and Gary, it's been a long time coming, and um, it's definitely it's definitely gonna be a banger for sure, for sure. You're a fairly respectful dude, but you know you're not afraid to speak your mind either. Are you expecting a bit of fun and games with Gary because he's very outspoken? Uh, do you enjoy it sometimes? I think he's a guy that probably doesn't cross the line, but he'll have a bit of fun with it. <laughs> Yeah, I feel that we both um are gonna really respect each other's um skill set. Um, you know, I, I've been in the game for a while. I don't need to talk talk any animosity against my opponent because I don't know him. You know, I don't. I, and 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 it's not like that for me anyway. Um, when it comes to martial arts, it's all about the the actual art itself. And when it comes to fighting, we're both gonna be in there. It's not like we're gonna both both go in there and you know rock says rock paper scissors and see who wins. We're trying to you know, punch each other's head off or rip each other's bones off. You know. So um, all in all, we, we respect each other, but um, we're definitely going to try to rip each other's heads off. Where do you rate Tonin in terms of <clears throat> jiu-jitsu practitioners in mixed martial arts? Because in terms of his resume, he's up there, right? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, Gary Tonin is one of the best in the world when it comes to um, jiu-jitsu. So um, let that be known, he's not just a jiu-jitsu fight in this fight. You know, um, I feel like I've done the right things to... We'll see. I've, I I I felt like I've done the right things throughout this whole fight camp. But it's been a whole jiu-jitsu slash anti-wrestling fight camp. So let's say my, my team prepared me well and I can't wait to go in there and um show the fans uh, a great fight. There's sometimes moments that happen in MMA where fans are like, jiu-jitsu isn't <laughs> real, you know? I feel like um, Tan Lee that knockout was one of those moments where I was like, oh, you were against one of the best leg lockers in the world. How are you going to defend against it? Well, I'm just going to hit you really hard in the face. Uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what, was, what was your response no. to that one? No, that's that's 100% right. Um, as, as I just said, it's not a jiu-jitsu fight. All in all, Gary is a very, very great jiu-jitsu practitioner, probably one of the best in the world, let that be known. But it's not a jiu-jitsu fight. Um, I feel jiu-jitsu itself is a great art to have under your belt, for sure, when it comes to mixed martial arts. If you mix a bit of uh, wrestling with jiu-jitsu, you're, you know, you're arguably one of, probably one of the best fighters in the world or could potentially be one of the best fighters in the world. But, um, you know, this is, as, as I said, it's mixed martial arts. It's a mix of everything together, you know. You have so many variety of ways to win, and uh, I'm going to show that. Do you take a little bit of... I think inspiration's the wrong word, but do you take uh, something away from the way that uh, Tan Lee beat him? Because you're known for your striking, and if he does grab you, is that is that maybe the response? Yeah, it's it's definitely a blueprint. It's it's definitely something that exposes him. Um, you know, he was on a seven fight win streak, whatever it was, six fight win streak. Got the title fight, got exposed. You know, never no one has no one has hit him as hard as what Tan Lee did. And um, definitely exposed him. Um, you know, he can definitely come back from that uh, as he has. So uh, we'll see if I can, you know, the blueprint is there. So we'll see if I can pull that off. He certainly did come back. I mean, two back-to-back -back finishes. That's one way to shush your doubters, I guess. How impressed were you 
particularly with the Gasanov one, because Gasanov was undefeated. Yeah, I felt like um, Shamil, Shamil had that in the bag. All in all, he had that that fight in the bag. Um, I felt that he let ego get to him and um, didn't respect Gary's jiu-jitsu at all. Um, and, you know, as I said, Gary's one of the best and Gary showed it that night and um, you know, made his O, turned into, took his O away. <laughs> what do you think of Gary's striking? Is it underrated? Uh, Gary's striking? Um, he does the right things uh, to implement it into his game. Um, where would it be on my list of best of the best? Probably down the bottom. But um, he does the right things to implement his game of or his style of fighting. So he, he throws the most unorthodox shots to get that clinch happening to get that you know to grab onto you or some somewhat somehow so i guess that's his style i can't change that <laughs> by the same token do you think that your jiu-jitsu is underrated i think uh, i mean you've got a guillotine choke win over christian lee you know you've, you've had some <laughs> you've had some pretty nice subs in your time but it's been a while yeah um i felt like i i haven't had the opportunity to um to use my jiu-jitsu because it's all it's I basically go in there and fight with my swords or die on my die on my shield, you know. So um, if I, if I get the opportunity to use my jiu-jitsu, yeah, I feel like it's a bit underrated because I haven't used it. No one's seen me wrestle. They only kind of seen me like anti grapple. Um, but yeah, we'll see. <laughs> if I have to use it, I'll use it definitely. There are certain storylines that kind of bubble along. For example, we all knew that one day Stamp would fight Denise and. You're two and zero against Christian, and he's one of the most successful fighters in the history of one championship. Um, is that one for down the road still? I mean, you're you're 34 now, right? Do you, do you fancy that trilogy? I know you wanted to grapple him at some point. Yeah, I feel like um, no, Christian's a great guy, man. Um, I feel like if I was to fight Christian, um, it would most probably be have it would have to be down at featherweight where it all began, you know, uh, making a trilogy at featherweight, but. I don't feel like Christian's making that weight anytime soon. And plus I like Christian. I don't want to fight him. So leave yeah. that, leave that, uh, leave that in the, the past. What did you think of Shamil's performance last weekend? Uh, he said he'll do whatever it takes to rematch Gary Tonin. That, that seems to be his ultimate focus. Um, how big of a rival is he for, for what you're going after? Yeah. Shamil obviously, um, is a great opponent. Uh, I'm 13 and one, 14 and one now. It's, it's getting 14 wins, no fluke. But he, what I took away from, I didn't watch that fight live. I had to watch that fight, uh, rewatch that fight. And um, watching that fight, I felt like he was a one trick pony. Um, no disrespect, but I felt like his grappling didn't go his way. Uh, that's all he has. Literally, he, he just grapples and tries to get the choke and stresses out when he can't get it and gasses out it's uh, at this level gassing out at that level um yeah i i feel like he's got a long road ahead of him to be, to be honest you guys were supposed to fight right so are you destined to fight at some point you're both fighting for the top spots in this division yeah it makes sense um to fight so um, switched over but yeah it makes sense to fight um shamil in the in the near future um if I have to do it after this fight, if I have to do it beforehand, um, whatever. Like uh, my main focus right now is on Gary. Um, my overall focus is getting that title back. So if Shamil somehow we bump heads getting towards that title, then you know we have to do it. Do you see the rematch going differently with Tankai and Tan Lee? Um, I. I do. I do feel that uh, Tan Lee will edge this one. Um, I feel that Tank Kai will have somewhat of ring rust. If not ring rust, he'll he'll fight a bit more timid. Uh, just like the first fight, I feel like um, Tan Lee will, um, won't be as aggressive um, as what he was the first fight, in which got him caught uh, half the time. So um, I feel like Tan Lee uh, will come in to this fight with a better game plan. How impressed have you been with Tang Kai? I mean, the guy hasn't lost since I think 2017 over in China. Since then, he you know, knocking people out, hitting hard, putting on good fights, and won himself the world mm -hmm, title. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, he's he's definitely on a tear. Um, and all due respect, I mean, he's the champion, so it's hard it's hard enough to get there. And he's he took he took the right route to get to the title, so um, and did what he ever he had to do to get that title off Pan Lee. So good for him. Um, he is a very very dangerous opponent. Uh, all in all, that skill set. Uh, respect as a champion. Which fight are you most excited about at the moment outside of your own? There's been so many big fights announced. Uh, which one has kind of got your attention? Um, definitely, I feel like the Stamp and um, the Stamp and Denise fight for sure. Um, they both bang. Like the bang and former training partners, it builds like a great story. Um, other than that, I like the. I actually like the um was it Ty Tyro Tolo and uh, Isaac Mitchell. I like that Isaac Mitchell was signed up uh in one. Now he's like he's like one of the best grapplers in Australia overall. So that's a great banger. Um, but I don't know, man. I I try not to look too much outside of my fights, man. I I, I want to be a fanboy after I fight. <laughs> What are you really pleased with that you've been working on without giving anything away? Is there anything we can expect? I mean, we know that you've got a cannon of a right hand, but is that is that as a as a fan who's watching you fight <sighs> for the first time, what, what they should be looking out for? Is there any other yeah. tricks you want to bust out? Yeah, that, that, that cannon has turned into a missile now. So um, we'll see if uh, Gary Turner can bring some anti-missile chin, granite chin, whatever it was, uh, or something that whatever he... He possesses or can get whatever I don't know, but um, this right hand has become a missile. Um, not only has have I um worked on my striking, I mean a lot of my grappling and exchanges and uh, scramblings, um, my cardio, my footwork, everything is my speed, everything's gone to plan with this fight camp, and I couldn't be happier with this fight camp that I've had at Kilcliffe. You've had so many highlights. Uh, is that what you're sensing here? A big knockout uh, on the feet? Is that what you're feeling? Um, on a on a you know a, a fairy tale ending, yeah, fairy tale ending for sure. I finished Gary Turner within the first round, um, but you know for me, it's never a, a fairy tale ending. There's always something that has to come up. So I'm expecting a three round war for sure. Um, I'm gonna do whatever I can uh, to get my hand raised for sure. Awesome. I'm going to wrap up with the uh, perfect striker, if that's right. I'm going to ask you just to make sure you're nicely framed. So yeah. in terms of one championship fighters across all disciplines, who would you choose for punches? The punches, uh, the best puncher. Um, in one championship, I'd say John Lineker. Hands of stone. Makes sense, right? <laughs> Good call. Elbows? Elbows. Um, uh, Jonathan Haggerty for sure. Knees. Um, knees. The flying knee. <laughs> Martin Ewan. <laughs> cool. Kicks. Uh, kicks. Super leg for sure. Who's got the best chin? The best chin. Uh, DJ. And oh, and... Rod Tang. Sorry, Rod Tang. Rod Tang. Rod Tang. My <laughs> yeah, bad. DJ, say... DJ doesn't get hit. Sorry, my bad. Yeah, Rod Tang for sure. Most people say Rod Tang. Uh, to be fair. Yeah. Uh, and uh, microphone skills. Microphone skills. Oh, cringy or very good. I think that who's got the best microphone skills? <laughs> the most cringiest, Gary Turner for sure. The best, um, Conwan Hill. <laughs> he's been busting it out recently. Fair play to his he's English. Been busting it. Yeah, he's yeah, been for sure, for sure. Uh, respect, man. Always good to see you, man. Good luck. Have a good one. My guy. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Take a move in the ring. You can hit me with the words you